I just want to point out that when we've been working with these sequences of numbers, we've actually been doing mathematics. So, for instance, when we talked about the sequence of odd numbers, and we said, what's the next number if the first three numbers are 1, 3, and 5, and then we fill in the next number and say it's 7, and then the next number after that is 9, so on and so forth, we're actually doing mathematics, and that kind of reasoning we use is called inductive reasoning. Now we go down to the sequence of squares, same thing. 1, 4, 9, you ask yourself, what's the next number in that sequence? So you look at this pattern right here, and then that method of reasoning that you use is called inductive reasoning, and you say, well, this looks like 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, this must be 4 squared, so it's going to be 16. The one after that, then it's going to be 5 squared or 25. Okay, so that's called inductive reasoning when we reason like that, and it's actually doing mathematics. And what you want to notice when you do that is that it's kind of a different state of mind. When you're in that state of mind, you're looking at these numbers, trying to fill in the next number here, you don't notice yourself as being separate from your surroundings, you don't notice time going by. It's actually a pleasant experience. It's only when you come out of it and maybe ask yourself, did you do as well as somebody else, or you didn't get this, or you got it kind of quickly, that you put some kind of value judgment on it. But the actual process of doing mathematics is actually a, a, um, a very enjoyable process. Let's look at the next sequence. Fibonacci sequence, named for the mathematician Fibonacci, it's his sequence, let's write it down. It also starts with a 1, okay? The next number in the sequence is also a 1. The number after that is 2, and the number after that is 3. So here you're using your inductive reasoning to try to think of what comes next in this sequence. You're doing mathematics, it's a pleasant experience. You might come out of it and tell yourself, oh, you're not getting this, and you put something kind of negative on it. But that's not the mathematics. That's what you're kind of bringing to it. So we look at this pattern right here. This isn't quite as easy to get as the other ones. I'll give you the next number, 5. Still thinking about what comes next. Next number is 8. And the next number after that, 13. So, how do you get the consecutive members of the Fibonacci sequence? It always starts with two ones, and then you add the previous two to get the next one. So, one and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, three and five is eight, so on and so forth. So, that's the Fibonacci sequence, and we, the method of reasoning we use to get those numbers in the sequence is called inductive reasoning. Now, it turns out that the Fibonacci sequence, all kinds of applications around the world that we live in, um, things just sort of align themselves according to the Fibonacci sequence. You wouldn't think so when you first see it, but it's just all over the place. I want to show you my favorite uh, application of the Fibonacci sequence, the family tree of a male honeybee. Now, a male honeybee has one parent, its mother. A female honeybee has two parents, a mother and a father. The uh, female honeybee comes from a fertilized egg, a male honeybee comes from an unfertilized egg. So let's ask the question, how many bees in each generation of the family tree of a male honeybee? So here's my male honeybee right here. That male has only one parent, its mother. But that mother has two parents, a mother and a father. So a female bee and a male bee. That female has two parents, a female and a male. But that male has only one parent, a female. Right? That female, two parents. That male, one parent. That female, two parents. And so how many bees in the family tree of a male honeybee? In the first generation, one. Next one, one. Next one, two. The one after that, three bees. The one after that, five bees. Using inductive reasoning, we don't have to actually fill out the rest of this. We see that pattern, and we know it follows the Fibonacci sequence. So how many bees in the next generation of the family tree of this male honeybee? Eight. And we could work it out by actually putting them down there and prove that to ourselves. So Fibonacci sequence, all kinds of applications all around the world. We're going to see a few more as we go through this course. 
Um, but the thing that I mainly wanted to point out here is that even though these number sequences seem easy, you're actually doing mathematics. And I also want to point out that that's a pleasant experience.